I don't know why I hate on Tex Mex, man, but I do. I hate on Tex Mex. Bar Mitzvahs. <clears throat> yeah, that nigga Kanye tripping right now, man. <laughs> <laughs> It's the Danny Brown Show, sit back, relax your eye ready now, while your mate's studio. It's the Danny Brown Show, we about to get live, let's go. It's the Danny Brown Show, we about to get live, like your eye ready now, while your mate's studio. It's the Danny Brown Show, we about to get live, let's go. Yo, yo. What's up? Coming to you motherfuckers from YME Studios in Austin, Texas. It's your boy. <laughs> Danny Brown, a British motherfucker. I got none other than motherfucking H-Town finest with me, man. I, it's been too long. I, I supposed to been had a motherfucker from Texas on this motherfucker. We should have laid it off with this shit, but I got this motherfucking legend with me right now. What's up, motherfucking Chingo? What it Bling do? What it do? What it bed. do? What's cracking, bro? Uh, thanks for coming H-Town. too, man. Hell yeah, man. So you, um, have you spent a lot of time in Austin? Just yeah, man, I, I did a whole album out here one oh, time. Oh, shit. Yeah. I mean, what was that? You was driving back and forth, or you actually stayed? I was, yeah, it was like hotel and stuff like that. Then I had like a, um, had like a little apartment for a little bit. Oh, shit. But, uh, but yeah, I was out here a lot. Yeah, I love it out here, man. It's the one place, I will say, man, I've, um, I feel like I've been around a lot in Texas, but I feel like, is it weird to say I don't feel like Austin is Texas? No, everybody, <laughs> everybody says that. It's like, uh... <laughs> I mean, some people might look at it as like an oasis, or some people be like, "Man, don't California my Texas." Because <laughs> I got um, I got people from um, Fort Worth, funky town, and yeah. going up to um, you know, just Dallas, because Dallas is this whole it's other lit. world, yeah, it's <laughs> it's lit. This yeah. whole other shit, and uh, and then you know, like I say, I spent a lot of time with Houston. I actually like what I would do um, when I would work on an album and shit, and every now and then I would get stuck, like you know, just stuck, and you just need some um. Fresh scenery. Just some inspiration. Yeah. I will say. I will um and whatever music I was into at the time, I would just actually just take a trip to that place. And I uh, I remember um one point in time I was just listening to um a lot of Houston. I was listening to um the Sauce Twins. Okay. Yeah. I was listening to Ooh-wee. a lot of yeah, 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 I was yeah. listening to a lot of the Sauce Twins and um I met Maxwell Cream and you know. So then um oh I was really cool with B King. Oh, out yeah, B-King. yeah, that's the homie. That's, the that's homie. my dog right there, man. I wish he need to come through on the show, man. B King, what's up, man? It, it, that'll up be epic. Boy. That'll be epic. That's my bro, boy, cause... man. That's yeah. my boy. So I, um, I went out to um, Houston. I actually was going out there hung, hanging out with B King. We went to hang out, just, you know, just doing a lot of shit. But I would say, man, Houston, man, it's a uh, yeah, it's a black man's utopia. <laughs> some sense, you know what I'm saying? Like you go out there. Hey, it's everybody's utopia. Yeah, but. <laughs> <laughs> they all look like Beyonce, man. Like you can go in certain situations. A couple situations. Megan Thee Stallions. Yeah, know what I'm they couple, all like that's like normal. Couple Kelly Rollins. No Dog, it's so fire out there, man. Like people be because a lot of people say Atlanta. You know they'll be like Atlanta. Atlanta dangerous, man. That's what that shit is. I feel like Atlanta. Well, I guess it's happening with Houston too. I mean, y'all did get the transplant from like the the Hurricane Katrina mm-hmm, shit. Yeah. A lot of New Orleans, but that was still coming from one place. But I think now. They saying like a lot of motherfuckers is moving to Houston and shit. Now, 50 Cent live out there, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I mean, bizarre, yeah. man. He too close, man. <laughs> I, I, yeah. It's like, it's like the whole world got shook up, close. right? Like, 50 too close. I don't know if we should be living in the same state. <laughs> I love that nigga, man. But uh, yeah, man. So I will say, man, it's great to have you on here, man, because you... Um, you know, we got a lot in common in some senses with motherfucker that started out in this rap shit. You, you remember the first time we met? Mm-mm. It was, no? Okay. All right. E- even better, because you might be like, Man, I don't remember that shit. All I, right. I definitely don't so, remember. So we, we probably fucking. weren't formally introduced, but you were doing a show with uh, Heems and uh Oh, Victor. my God. That was so hey, long ago. I think ago. it was at Fitzgerald's. And, that was and, definitely was so when I was on tour with Das Racist. Yeah, yeah, Das Racist. Yeah. And dude, you this is when you were rocking the um the uh, Winnie the Pooh, the Tigger trench coat <laughs> with like no shirt up there, Detroit pimping, Motor City pimping. You know what I'm saying? Dripping on the stage. I think you had. I think you brought the hot iron. Had the hot iron in the back. Was that? You know what I'm saying? The gap. You yeah, know what I'm saying? The that was that was that time. That was yeah, that time. Man. But damn, man, that was that was um actually my first tour. I actually been on. So shout out to those races, man. Victor Heems, Dap, the homies, Lacudas. Uh, I think a, a cat named Despot. Despot. That's yeah, what I was Despot. about to say. Despot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Despot got muscles and shit. Now they actually got that show on. They got a show on HBO. Um, what the fuck is the name of these niggas? Shit. God damn it. I remember it used to be a podcast, man. These niggas was doing podcasts way, way, way back in the day, man. That shout out that man. But yeah, but yeah. Anyway, that's that was the first time I was like, man, it's Danny Brown, dude. 
I'm like he went up there and wrecked it. <laughs> <laughs> no t-shirt on. Like, yeah, man. Went off. Um, that was the early days, man. Touring in the fucking rental van. Yeah, that was like some punk rock type shit, dog. Yeah, it was nasty, man. It was nasty. I mean, it taught me a lot. I would say, um, but I had went on. I wouldn't say it was my first tour because shots off to fifty. I went on tour with fifty. Yeah, yo had took me with him, so I was able to see touring on this big scale. Uh huh. The first time I ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Orders in a green room. And yeah, shit. it was. Ah, oh, man, that was the least. And then to go to when I did my first tour as in this. <laughs> yeah. Running in a fucking van going I'm talking about we literally went across the fucking bro I can't believe we made it definitely should have got <laughs> hindered at they just locked up at some border or some shit like it was too much going on there some shit no Paso or something like pull over uh, we went to El Paso too yeah um, we went to El Paso and that, that, was, that was the first time like El Paso you know I mean, you know, you play um, small towns like that. You know, you're not about to play a big ass venue like that. I think it was like a small bar type of situation. But after um, the show, that was the first time I ever been to. I mean, we got our strip clubs in Detroit, and we got our um, 18 and up. Usually, the 18 and up strip clubs in Detroit is the one where you where the girls could be fully nude, but it's no alcohol, and it ain't. But this one was 18 and up. I feel like, but you can bring your own alcohol in mm -hmm. if you was 20. Like, I ain't never <laughs> seen no shit like that. Yeah, that's called the butt naked. <laughs> yeah, they was butt naked in that bitch, man. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, <laughs> God, I God, was like no, nah. I'm like, man, El Paso was crazy. But I, I, I only thing about it is just, I don't know, man, Detroit will create, I think that's why I never probably, I don't want to jinx it or nothing, but you never really heard about me getting into no crazy shit or nothing like that. Because I get paranoid quick. Like, I feel not safe in a certain surrounding. I get the fuck out of there. Oh, yeah, like, yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. No. Yeah, like, I'm 43, bro. And, like, now now I listen to rap music, and you be hearing them say, like, you know, fish telling not the parking lot, shooting at the ops. And I'm like, oh, oh shit. I'm, I'm 43. Now I'm like, oh, 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 oh what, 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 what county you think you're doing this? <laughs> like, it's about three felonies right there. Yeah, it is scary now. I would say what it, because, I mean, the difference is, I would say, would change the whole shit, man. And it is just, I mean, rap music, man, it always been motherfuckers on some gangster shit and talking and shit. But I feel like back in the day, it was always a thing of, if you was really in the streets like that and you was really doing shit like that, they wouldn't get your ass no record deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know what I'm uh -huh. saying? They would have been like, nigga, once you get out the streets, nigga, then come holler type shit. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, but yeah. you got too much going on, we ain't about to sign you. Now with the internet, and, you know, you don't really need no fucking record deal. You can just blow up off the internet. And so now what really is happening now, you got, because even back then it was just rappers. All them niggas was just rappers. Now you really got real street niggas. Yeah, now. yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's rappers. And most of them, they still real street niggas. So their main source of income is not rap. They don't even care about making it. Like you seeing some gangster shit go down in real time now. And that's why you seeing these, that's why people are like, man, rap music motherfuckers dying in it. Niggas is going to jail. Like, no, it's real street. Now, yeah, and yeah, part yeah. two of that, before you were only here, who can make it into a source magazine or who can be on BET or who can be on MT and shit like that. Now it's just the internet. You can type up your regular hood nigga up the street. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He can make a dope ass song, make a video, post it on YouTube, and the whole world know about this nigga. Yeah. But that don't mean his life changed in that fucking month. Yeah, and he got yeah. the budget for the video and the jewelry and the cars and shit. And he's he a hood nigga, but yeah, now yeah. he a real life celebrity around the world, but he's still a hood nigga. Yeah. So when some shit happened to him in the hood, it looked like a big deal. I'm not saying it's not a big deal, but it is it's you know, it ain't fucking Tupac and Biggie type yeah, shit. You yeah, get yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. Like it ain't it ain't that. It's like, no, this is real street shit that's happening in front yeah, of us. Yeah, so yeah. and yeah. Yeah. And motherfuckers are signing them niggas now. Like, the record labels ain't caring about that shit. They like, shit, nigga, fuck it. Your Plus, ass die, shit. Give us, a, I hope you give us a lot of songs. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, make sure you make a lot of songs before like, you die. Like Jadakiss said, uh, he be all right, dead rappers get better promotion. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he, he be dead in the ocean. He all right, <laughs> dead rappers get better promotion. But the sad part to me, I would say, is that it's no um, artist development anymore. Like, because... Even now, like with these new rappers and shit, like as dope as they can be, if it took, you know, like, you know, like it, you got still got to go to a training camp. Like if you go to the league, they still going to have to put you through some tests. And that's why you signing all these niggas off fucking one viral moment and mm. then shit go left in the fucking one album. You don't want to, cause these niggas don't even know what you, 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 you get, you get it a nigga in his learning phase still. Yeah, the the development ain't there. Yeah, you giving a nigga, you giving a nigga all this money for one song. You're not even, you don't even know, like, you know, so... Whatever, man. But I you know what? You you made a good point on another episode 
where you had said um, it's more rappers than ever, and, and they're not even rappers. It's just people that be rapping, yeah. people, people that rap, <laughs> and, and, we, and, and that we know shit, about yeah. that we shouldn't know about. That's what I'm yeah, saying. We shouldn't even be knowing about these people, man. And like something happens, they're like, "Oh my god, a rapper, another rapper." But the internet is just, even though it is what it is, man. Which I would say, man, like I say, it's a pro and it's a con, because even. As much shit as I talk about it, if it wasn't for that shit, I wouldn't fucking be here right now. You Man, know? shout out to LimeWire and uh, Kazai and FrostWire. That, that's what got me known. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all that shit. People yeah. downloading the hell out of my stuff. They don't even understand, man. Usually the motherfucker take three days to download one song. Yeah. You keep previewing that bitch. You keep previewing. Like, Ooh, this bitch. So <laughs> when this bitch download, I'm going to burn it to a CD and turn up. <laughs> you. I'm about to play this for my homies. I'm going to be like, how you get this shit? That's what it was with me. See, I was cool because I understood the internet at an early age. And I got, I think I was on the internet like, 99 so i already knew what was up so like i would go to like all the drug dealer homies and shit and i'll be able to like download all those dj clue mixtapes and all that shit shit from, that'd be like bootleg in new york and shit that we would never get in detroit like i would get them so everybody would always want to hang with me because they know i got some ill cd they of some shit they never heard before man i met uh dj clue one time he <laughs> thought i was a fed oh shit <laughs> it's a long story but it was a uh you know those national lampoon movies I love those. So, what are you talking about? I, That's my childhood. Well, well, those are the classic ones, but that franchise, National Lampoon, it went on to make like a lot of. B, oh, yeah, I ain't, like I, ain't never, I ain't never seen like the you know the bootleg ones. Like the like the, the, I, I yeah, watched all the real ones. The classic shit. Nah, yeah. I'm talking about the ones that had like Paris Hilton in them. And yeah, shit no, like I, that. no, they had to be on like HBO in like the late '80s and early '90s. That's yeah. the only Lamp National Lampoons I've seen. So uh, I guess they had Clue doing a uh, like a cameo. He was playing a DJ at like this uh, mansion and National party. National Lampoon? Yeah, one of these like National Lampoon movies, right? Oh, yeah, that's definitely crazy. DJ Clue is in a National yeah. Lampoon. What the fuck? See, yeah, that, yeah they can see, probably look they be it up. Talking about, when, they, when they talk about we live in a simulation and like it's glitches in the Matrix and shit like that, like that's that that has to be that's like a, a Mandela effect. That's I don't a think simulation. That, I don't think that post, that, don't, that wasn't supposed to happen. <laughs> For real. <laughs> but I was trying to get the plug on the mixtape so I could distribute them back in Texas. So I'm like, yo, Clue, like, man, what's the, what's the, who do we call to place a wholesale order? And he, and he just is like at craft service looking at me sideways. He's like, huh, Houston, huh, where you from? And I'm like, Houston. He's like, uh huh. And he just starts going, who, Mike Jones, who, Mike Jones. No, I just think that's just New York. New York niggas <laughs> are just dicks, man. I swear to God, for some reason, man, New York niggas are just dicks, man. And then I, and I realized, man, when you, when you, when, when, when you go to New York and you spend some time there and you've been there, man, the living conditions is not that, it's not, not that glamorous. You get what I'm saying? Now, even if you got money. Like yeah, it's that, a lot I mean, of sacrifice. It's just, there, yeah, boy. yeah. Look, compared to a motherfucker born and raised in Houston, they be jealous, man. They be like, man, y'all niggas lived in real yeah, houses. Back, you got a whole backyard. Y'all lived in houses. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all had like, you would have to deal with rats and yeah. shit like that. Like, bro, I'm telling you, the, the New York living is not the most. I mean, at the end, it's it's a crazy situation. So that's why they raised. That's why they crazy motherfuckers, man. I love New York, though. I mean, at the end of the day, I wouldn't know how to rap if it wasn't for New York. And I think that's a lot of us. You get what I'm saying? Like, yeah. so. But yeah, crazy, crazy situations create crazy shit, and that's what that is. All right, man. We're gonna get into some motherfucking uh, ask Danny's, man. Ask Danny. Got Chingo up in this motherfucker helping me out. But yeah, yeah, man, you got questions, I got answers. Hit me up at Danny at the Danny Brown Show dot com. That's Danny at the Danny Brown Show dot com. Also send those voicemails through. I'll let your boy 512-522-9256. Yeah, man. So first up, I already know, man. This is do I look like a bitch? What do you mean? Can I did this nigga send some <laughs> pictures? Did he send <laughs> Exhibit A? Did hey. he send some pictures in? Um, okay. Hey Danny, I'm a relaxed guy. Very easy going. I made it to 28 with no problems, but whenever I go to Brooklyn, I get into these sick, sticky situations where people try to jump me out of nowhere. I never start shit myself, but if people are up in my beers, you know. Last time I was there, some guy almost cut my face with a box cutter like some Joker shit. I even got some tattoos so people stop. <laughs> <laughs> I even got some tattoos so people stop fucking with my shit, but it really got worse. <laughs> <Some, laughs> that's what your dumb ass get, man. Some tattoos. <laughs> this nigga try to see. That's what I'm, man. <laughs> Mind you, I ain't got one tattoo, man. You get what I'm saying? Mind you, I'm white. Oh, yeah, but people from every race and nationality try to fuck with me. Help me, Danny Brown. I fear that I might look like a bitch and an easy target. I think you'd be starting some shit. For some reason, man, I just, cause I've been to Brooklyn a lot, man. And, and people have fucked with me, but I don't know, man. I have a, um, I don't know, man. You got to just keep a, a hard back and a stern face. Play your position and know your place. You get what I'm saying? You just got to keep it. I don't know. But uh, I don't know how you really look, but you do sound like a bitch for getting <laughs> tattoos to think that was about to make you look gangster. 
but I do think you be starting <laughs> shit though. I do think you be starting shit because don't nobody just be fucking with people, man. Nigga tried to cut your face. <laughs> what the fuck you saying to people? What you doing? You getting drunk, wilding out, hanging out in Brooklyn? No, I've been I, I I've been to Brooklyn a lot. You know what I'm saying? Like all through that motherfucker, man. Hanging, I wore a fucking marmot. I was, you know what I'm saying? I'm hanging out wearing a biggie marmot in Brooklyn. Ain't nobody try to do shit to me. I've, I've then, I've had people try to rob me in New York a few times. One of the worst situations was this one guy. He just walked up to me and he asked me for a cigarette. I knew that was a bad. I knew that was a bad idea, but I, I you know, I entertained him. I gave him a cigarette. We started to have a conversation. But this was actually at Port Authority. I'm actually about to get on the Greyhound, go back to Detroit. Share the cigarette out the blue. This nigga just say, man, I'm sorry, man, but I got to rob you. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what I did. I laughed so hard in this nigga face like, ah, y'all know my laugh too. I laughed so hard in this nigga face like, nigga, ah, on the Port Authority steps in Times Square, nigga, police everywhere, nigga, what the fuck? Rob me then, nigga, do it, because I ain't really, and I ain't got shit. The fuck is you gonna do? I ain't got shit. So I let, and the funny part is after I did, he's like, oh, you just gonna laugh at me? I'm like, nigga, yes. And then he just walked up here and do shit. So yeah, that happened. But yeah, man, um, you are, don't be doing shit to try to be tough. But you either got it or you don't. A lot of people trying to be tough and got um fucked up. You wanna weigh in on this? Change it isn't the slogan for Brooklyn, spread love, it's the Brooklyn way? Oh, and he or, be- or Brooklyn keep on taking it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that too, right? That too. <laughs> That's what I know. Brooklyn keep on taking it. Yeah. So, um, yeah, man. First of all, he wasn't that specific. Like, what part of Brooklyn? Because you know, uh, I mean, it, it don't it matter. Varies. It don't matter, man. Um, after COVID, Brooklyn went up. The fucking uh, Brooklyn drill. They started smoking on uh, op packs and. Oh, uh, they started shit. getting sturdy. Once they started getting sturdy, shit got crazy in New York, man. That's all I'm going to say, man. That shit like the Crip Walk. That shit like the New York Crip Walk, man. Niggas dying behind getting sturdy, man. That's what, what, what I be what, What's sturdy? What you mean? What? We don't see, uh, oh, that's boy, the name of that sturdy. dance? Yeah, they get sturdy. For real. Niggas been dying in New York ever since they've been getting sturdy, man. Y'all ever, might want to stop getting sturdy, man. We need to fucking make it rain and clear it out again, man. Chicken noodle soup. <laughs> yeah. Y'all need to start back man. chicken noodle soup in New York, man. What, what about this one? They need to do this, bring this one back. Oh, uh, the fucking Harlem Shake or something, man. Because <laughs> niggas show. been, ever since they've been fucking uh, getting sturdy, niggas been dying and going to jail. And ever, ever since Takashi blew up. It was a little bit before that. He was the nigga that was able to capitalize on that. But part two, man, I will say, man, um... That's my dog, man. Daniel, man. I never. I, that's one rapper I never hated on because I already knew what it was with that nigga, man. And he actually exposed a lot of shit in what hip hop was. Man. Yeah, So yeah, I yeah. feel like he, yeah. we needed him to really He's show. like a glitch in the matrix, right? Yeah, really to show like a lot of these kids, man, that grow up, man. Like, nigga, this shit, this, this, this shit fake, man. It's some bullshit, man. But yeah, man, shots up to Kashi, man. Yeah, he called, out, he called out like the billboard numbers being fake. Everybody, right? man. Mm-hmm. He exposed, he exposed this whole shit, man. Yeah. And his name Daniel. I can never hate on another Daniel, man. So shout out. But I will say, man, you know, I think me and him got the same type of car. Like that's what I'm saying. That's why me and you um share um so much in common. I would say, man, that started off with this rap shit, man. Yeah. But really just funny motherfuckers and actually can possibly yeah. do comedy. This nigga is a funny motherfucker. If anybody just yeah. watch this nigga, oh, yeah. man. This nigga could actually I would love to see Takashi do stand up, man. Probably, Imagine probably, this nigga yeah. on stage telling jokes, All man. Roasting. I would be dying, man. So yeah, man. He probably be roasting this shit. Shouts out to the shouts out. All my Daniels, man. Shouts out my Daniels, man. Look, it's me, Takashi, and MF Doom. That's the Daniels of rap right there, man. I feel like that's some real shit. We niggas that, we done flipped this shit, man. Shots off that nigga, man. All right. Next up, we got um, Keeping You Cool. Hey, Danny, what are some tactics or strategy you use to keep cool when you know you fucked up around other people? I tend to get self-conscious of when I'm out and about with friends or new people when I drink or smoke. Friends tell me it's good, but I know damn well I act out. Any advice will help? Big fan of the show. Keep up the great work. Joe K from Santa... Nigga, I need to be asking you that, nigga. I don't know that motherfucking question either. I do the goddamn same, too. That's why the most part for me, man, I know I like to get fucked up. See, that's the thing about me with drinking. Um, I like to drink. It's fun. So, um, But the point is, I just don't know how to have one drink. That's not drinking to me. Like, I want to drink till I get fucking blacked out. And that's... I drink. I don't know how to, you know, it's either do it big or don't do it at all type of situation. So, and yeah, when I'm out and about and I'm fucked up, I'm acting a goddamn fool. I got 
too many um, embarrassing stories that I can tell you. I'm pretty sure you've heard a lot of them <laughs> during um, these episodes of this podcast. And yeah, I, I do a lot of dumb shit. What was the reason? Did I do any um, drunk recent situations? I mean, I haven't really been drinking that much. I, what I've been doing, I've just been drinking enough. So not really, but I haven't been getting... I mean, I got blacked out the other night, me and my lady, but that's see. But that's at the house, though. That's what I said. So <laughs> now just keep it to the house. If you want to get fucked up, keep it to the house. Yeah. You go out in public, it is what it is, you know? So that's what it is, man. What you think, man? Yeah, yeah, you know, uh, I agree with you, man. There's too many variables out there to be acting a fool in unfamiliar environments. It's easy in Austin, man. That goddamn 6th Street. What you call it? Um, shit. But that's one thing, too, man. The internet, man, if you be on that, the internet could make you paranoid about shit when it ain't that fucked up. Have you started Googling shit? Like one time I canceled a show in Dubai for a nice amount of money. Oh. But I Googled Dubai and it was like, man, if you drunk cussing in the street, you can go to jail for that. And I was like, damn, that's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I just started reading all the laws. And then I remember, you remember that's when Future came out with that mixtape, 56 Nights. Oh, yeah. When that nigga yeah. Esco had, he had got locked up out there, man. I was just like, man, it just seems like. I can get locked up in Dubai, man, like something about it. something I maybe and maybe, you know, sometimes you got to go with your gut feeling. Maybe I did the right thing. You were at the house and you heard Future telling the story about the hard drive. And it's just with the so much. He was like, hey, cool. I woke up. I'm talking about literally, I was supposed to go. The flight, let's say the flight is like 9 a.m. I'm up at like 6 a.m. Getting ready to go to the airport. And I'm just thinking, I'm Googling Dubai shit. You last minute canceled? Oh, right Nigga, I told him I lost my passport. <laughs> like, I can't find my passport, man. I'm packing. <laughs> I can't on, find my passport, man. man. <laughs> it sucks. People be hitting me up every now and then, man. I, I, I post some shit or do something. It'll be somebody like, what about that Dubai show, though? <laughs> <laughs> now I feel bad about that shit because I really do want to go to Dubai. And what I have learned by going to something like, you always think that you go to these strict-ass countries and, you know, shit's fucked up. And, you know, they got all these rules and extra rules and all that shit. But what I will say, when you go there as a celebrity, if someone, not a celebrity, not me, uh, uh, whatever. But when you go there, you know, when you come in and you're from, you know, you're a cool rapper from the, from the States and shit like that. They want to show you a good time. So they actually be getting way more lawless than what you would get. Yeah, 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 <laughs> like yeah. they go, they want to try to prove to you, like, I know you heard all this shit about us, but no, nah, I didn't like that. Check this out. Nah, nah, nah. You think all these niggas hanging out in Dubai and shit? Look at all them OnlyFans Instagram models. Them bitches be getting dumped on by camels and shit. <laughs> 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 them niggas be hitting them up, come through. Them motherfuckers be hitting them up. <laughs> them sheiks and shit be hitting them bitches up, man. Them you niggas you be just like, got to check in first, right? As soon as you land in Dubai, they be like, you with us, bro. We going to turn up. Just imagine, man, you meet a badass bitch, man, off Instagram. You be like, this bitch bad. She be hitting you up. You be kicking it, y'all kicking it. Did you just see, you just look in her eyes. You're like, man, I think she got a dark past. I can see, I could just look in her eyes and just know shit ain't right. Even when we had sex, man, it's not even like, it don't even seem like, I mean, she do the damn thing, but something ain't right. Then we all get get together, been years. She be like, man, my shit got to cracking on TikTok, man. I was going viral. <laughs> these fucking Arabs, these chic <laughs> niggas hit me up, man. <laughs> and I was making good money on the internet, man. <laughs> I was making good money on the internet. You know what I'm saying? My shit was doing good, but they said a million dollars, man. Yeah. These niggas, oh, a hundred thousand. I mean, that's a million yeah, yeah. too crazy. These niggas can jack a hundred. They were like, man, these niggas said a hundred thousand. I ain't never had that much money in my life. A hundred thousand? I'm like, fuck, I can get my mama some money. I can buy me a new car, a crib. I'm thinking I'm about to just go out there and just, you know, maybe you have to fuck somebody. I mean, I don't know. Then they I'm brought the camels the, out. And they brought the camels <laughs> out. <laughs> <laughs> like, what part of Tijuana, uh, Dubai is this? <laughs> They played that 50 Cent song. Y'all know what I'm about <laughs> when them camels come out. <laughs> <laughs> and them camels come out. But you done went too far. It's that they, petroleum money, bro. That's part they two, got. they tell your ass, bitch, you could be, they go, you going to be stuck out here and get no money. Bitch, we trafficked your ass. Oh, you can damn. be stuck out here. <laughs> Do this camel action on camera, too. We recording this. This, Oh, man. They do her dirty. Now that she sound, come that back sound like extortion and everything. She, yeah, come back traumatized. You, I think you see them. So that's but actually when they come back traumatized like that, that's when you see them go full fledged and they start making videos of them fucking squirting McDonald's drive throughs and Ooh. shit. And you be like, how does bitch get to this point where she do shit like this, man? It's on my Twitter timeline. 
Camels, man. <laughs> Them camels came out. <laughs> Like you're a sexual deviant, man. You done went too far. So you done did somebody done did something to you. And then done triggered some other shit and that shit going too crazy. You ain't normal no more. Now you're at McDonald's. You a sexual predator at that point, man. Kids get this they sell happy meals there, bitch. Your ass should go to jail, man. Anytime I be seeing them bitches be jacking up doing shit in their car in public places, I'm like, you should go to jail. There's kids around. Cause that was a nigga just jacking the dick. <laughs> <laughs> nigga Jack and the dick in a motherfucker drive through that Starbucks and shit, man. What? Oh Lord. Nigga, he going to jail. <laughs> but the bitches could do it. We'd be like, ooh, that's hot. <laughs> Imagine if you saw that in public though. Imagine if you just pulled up to Miss B Nasty. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Squirting on her windshield at the car wash. Damn. Ain't that? <laughs> Miss B Nasty. She she the one started that shit, but I be looking in her eyes, man. <laughs> and you see the camera. Some made all it's just yeah. <laughs> Some made all it's like the I can see the, the the clock's ticking, man. It's almost <laughs> like, you know. All right. Oh yeah, that was uh oh we ain't even oh yeah, I told this we jumped some other shit about this nigga keeping his cool. I told you, uh, I'm sorry. I don't even know that I don't know the answer to that either. If I knew that, man, I wouldn't um Oh yeah, stay your ass in the house. That was <laughs> You wanna get drunk and fucked up, then do that shit amongst you and your lady. Maybe trusted friends. You know, a few trusted friends, but all that getting fucked up and hanging out. I told you, man. I got blacked out drunk one time. I ran into this nigga Joe Rogan. I talked to him about three hours. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck I said to Rogan, man. That nigga know my whole life, all type of shit, man. I think the nigga feels sorry for me now, man. That's why he be fucking with me. Like, man, this nigga Danny got a lot of trauma there. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I need perks to work. Hey, Danny, long time fan. I want to get your opinion on this. I've been tattooing for about five years now. My clientele is growing. My artwork is getting better day by day. Only thing is I need Percocet to produce my masterpieces I feel though I can't work without. If I'm not high, I can't get by. I need perks to work. Question is, what should I do? Should I stop doing something I love just to kick my habit? Should I try new drugs? Should I go to rehab as a man yourself who gets big high? Who told you that? <laughs> What's the best thing for me to do? I don't want to feel too dependent on the perkies. Man, it's not like, nigga, you already gone off the perkies. Well, the best thing you can do, um, I will say um, as a person that um, um, rap music, you know, writing raps and, you know, writing, is, it could be a stressful situation. So um, I use PEDs as well. I used to take Adderall a lot to um, write songs and make music, which I, which I found out that's pretty common nowadays in rap music. I didn't know. I, I feel like I was the first person to ever even mention a drug Adderall on a song. I'm not trying to take credit for that shit. <laughs> <laughs> but you know that that's how these niggas be making it. I made 30 songs. And that's why these niggas' albums is long and all this shit. But whatever. Okay. Um, <laughs> now, Perkins says to me, I never uh, use Perkins says to work. Perkins says to me, it's just always getting freaky. Percocets make me horny for some reason, so I take Percocets. This is a sexual situation going down, and um, I will say what you got to realize is that drugs don't make you talent because you had the talent before you did the drugs. You just feel like the drugs just made it fun to do, and that's all it is because doing drugs can be fun sometimes. But at the end of the day, you got to realize that the drug don't make you talent, and you got to just start working without the shit. I'm not saying quit perks. I'm not saying you, I'm, all I'm saying is you got to start every now and then. You can do your perks and shit, but then be like, fuck it. Reward yourself with the perks. I'm not saying <laughs> this is the best advice in the world, but be like, fuck it. Let me do a piece, and then because I did the piece, I'm going to take the perk after. And then that's that. You get what I'm saying? Type shit like that and wing yourself off the perks. But um, yeah, I never had a problem with perks. I, I, um, like I said, they always been sexual. Th I actually took too many perks one time. I just projectile vomited. Oh, and I actually had sciatic nerve damage from playing NBA 2K too much. Oh shit! No, that's fucked up, ain't it? The only person got an injury from playing a basketball video game. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, my homie gave me some perks, and, and I was feeling good off them perks. But I did watch that, you know, um, Nikki Jams, the fucking Nikki Jams show on Netflix. I recommend. I love that shit. That nigga was going off them perks when I would call people going off them Nikki Yams. Damn. So, yeah, you ever had any fucking pill problems? You never been a pill guy? You talking about me? Yeah. Hell no. Oh, see, that's good, man. <laughs> I was abusing antibiotics for a little bit. She Anti fucked me up. Good for you, right? <laughs> nah, you don't want to overdo it. I was having this little tonsil issue, dog, and I was having to pop antibiotics and shit. Mm hmm. <laughs> 
Well, I was like, oh yeah, you had to clear that up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because all you know, antibiotics with a motherfucker burning. Nah. <laughs> like where that uh, antibiotic? You gotta go to Mexico and get God, the generic man. ones. You just gotta stock up on them bitches, man. You can fuck raw all the time. God damn. I know, right? So what on Nicky Jam on the show? How did what did they call him? He was perks. He was taking perks. So he said like in, you like, never seen that shit? It's on Netflix. It's but a, I watched it in Spanish. I saw some episodes in Spanish, so I can't imagine him oh. saying Los Percoses or Los Perks. No, I think they were saying perks. Because me and the homies, I remember we watched this during like the COVID time. And I remember we loved that shit. We loved that series. We and the homies, we was watching that shit. Oh, I think it probably was in subtitles. And we was watching that shit, but then, and that's what the perks was around. So all the homies, we 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 named that shit like, oh, you how many Nicky Jams? You want the Nicky Jam? Oh, yeah, that became that became slang. That became our the slang. slang which... <laughs> so niggas was taking the Nicky Jams, man. Hey, hey, the fans couldn't keep up. They're like, okay, yeah. what the fuck? Matter of fact, we called them Nicky Yams. We ain't even put the jams on. Like, man, we go off them Nicky Yams. I know he don't want to be fucking associated with perks, but that was fucked up. While watching that TV show, cause the perks that the, the, every trouble he got into, it was over the fucking perks, Damn. man. But I would say, as a person that took Adderall for a long period of time, man, I uh, I realized I haven't taken Adderall in years now, to be honest. And um, I realized what it did to me, man. As much as it made me write dope ass raps and a lot of songs, y'all niggas like. After a while of taking them, I just became fucking bipolar, and I didn't even realize it. Like taking perks, I mean not perks, but taking Adderall, but fucking like it does something to your mood after a while. And I guess because, you know, you take them so much, it does so much to your fucking dopamine or whatever the fuck. So the next day you're always coming down. Because if, if, you, if you don't really do drugs like that or like, I mean, if you're not binging them, like if you, even you do Molly. Like if you do Molly or fucking Adderall, whatever, the next day, you know, you feel like shit because you done tapped all your fucking resources, you know. So the, now. The Molly Ringwalls, Hannah Montana. Yeah. So what happens is you take another one. Feel good. So, and you just keep going and keep going. And so you know it. But yeah, I used to never sleep. Skinny as fuck, never eating, just taking fucking Adderalls and writing raps. I know it sounds cool, but um, I I I feel like I ruined a lot of relationships just being on Adderall because you talk too fucking much. You get what I'm saying? Just imagine you don't even know niggas like that. Like you just and you know everybody got their perception of people or whatever the fuck. I'm the type of motherfucker. I'm gonna tell you what I think off rep. I ain't we ain't even got that type of relationship where I should be even talking to you like that. But that's the way Adderall do. Oh. You get some Adderall in you and a couple of drinks, you be like, man, you know that last song you did? That shit was kind of weak, man. You need to... <laughs> <laughs> Meeting rappers I just knew. That's why I have no rap friends, man. I swear like, to God. Like, you didn't have to put that I one out. I tell a nigga about themselves, man. That's, you know that one tweet you said, man? That was some bullshit, man. What that you shit was mean, yeah, man. Yeah, like, just, I was just, bro, I was just telling a nigga about... And at the end of the day, don't nobody want to hear no nigga telling them about themselves. <laughs> Especially no nigga you just met, but that was me. But part two, that's why anybody that I feel like are my friends in the industry, they're my real friends because we can say whatever the fuck we want to say to each other because I've created that relationship with each other. So, And that shit kind of helps me too because I feel like um, that's how you know a motherfucker will care because they know it's not going to hurt you by saying like, damn, man, you fucking up right now. You kind of tripping. You need to get back on your shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, yeah. Well, other, you know, you can have these fake ass fucking industry relationships where motherfucker don't give a fuck, man. As soon as you fall off, they gonna, you ain't even gonna have a new number. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? As long as you cracking, they your homie, but just let, let shit go left. Let that you go through some shit. You will see. Um, best friend breakup. Hey, Danny, my name's Anthony. <laughs> I've had my best friend in my life for about 20 years. I met him when we were 11. Fast forward to him going to prison for about seven years, barely getting out two years ago. Since he was locked up, I met my wife three years. We have four wonderful kids. We all moved to Arizona this past summer. We thought things would go smoothly, but it turns out we'll let him to prison isn't stopping. He's still the same immature dude every weekend, staying out all weekend, using my house like a trap house, using cocaine, popping pills around my kids like we 20 again. Right. All the while, he has a baby on the way, a very pregnant wife mad at him all the time. We tried to reach out and go on the chill double date, but the wife turns out to be racist toward my wife. They white, we Mexican. On Thanksgiving, my wife had a little too much to drink and let her have it. She How threw a tamale I... in her face. Mm -hmm. How should I handle <laughs> this situation? Keep up the good shit. Piss on me, beat me. You bet I'm coming up in May. 
Woo! This album. But nigga, it's so easy. Nigga, get that nigga the fuck out your house. You got motherfucking kids. That's one thing that stopped everything. The borders. I don't give a fuck about you, nigga. I don't care where you come from, nigga. My kids come first, nigga. You doing dumb shit around my kids, nigga. I will beat you the fuck up. I don't even know why we having this conversation. You posted as soon as you went through a drug situation with him in front of your kids, and you don't do no shit like that in front of your kids. You supposed to beat him up, kick him out your house. Fuck him, fuck his bitch, all that shit. That shit is over with, nigga. You talking about 11, y'all nigga was kids, nigga. We grown, nigga. Nigga, that nigga, that nigga lived a total different um upbringing than you did. You was out here on the streets doing good, myriad motherfuckers having kids. This nigga was in jail making motherfucking spreads. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> this nigga was fucking putting a towel up to take a shit. He got all type of different fucking principles and views and all type of shit, man. Leave that nigga the fuck alone. Any nigga, bro, I say this all the time, man. Um, jail gonna turn you to a different nigga no matter who you is. Like the person I am. I wouldn't be the person I am if I didn't go to fucking jail. But I don't know if the person um I was before I went to jail, I would be sitting here doing this shit. So, you know, it's a pro and con of everything, but... This motherfucker, man, I don't even know why we talking. This nigga doing coke, popping pills, man. Dog. And my daughter, she 21. She grown. So I can imagine me having niggas. I wouldn't let you do that shit around my dogs. <laughs> <laughs> nigga, you going to leave the door open? Ditto run out? You get what I'm saying? You run around, nigga. Ain't no nigga coming around my dogs popping pills, doing coke and shit, and acting crazy. You talking about you turn your house into a trap house? That mean niggas pulling up, serving them, or he serving niggas doing all type of shit? Man, if you don't get that nigga out your house, bro, your wife going to leave you. How about that? If you go, it's gonna get to the point of this nigga or your bitch and your kids and your that's what I'm trying to tell you what you up against. You up against your family or your friend. Nigga and family over friends any day. Well, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> most, most of the time. Sometimes, man. I mean, cause shit could get, you know, sometimes your friends, you know, family <laughs> There's caveats. Family ain't choice. Friends are. And you know, sometimes you ain't choose to be around this fucked up motherfucker. And sometimes it take a friend to get you away from your family. Sometimes it take a friend to let you know your family fucked up. You know, because you'll be blinded by my family. You know, and it and take being around a friend and be like, or even something as small as going around your friend family and seeing how they move. And you're like, damn, man, these niggas. <laughs> You be like, damn, man, you hang around your friend family, see how they live, and they, they got shit together. You be like, damn, so I know my friend, he, he know my family fucked up. He ain't saying shit. I don't know if I can fuck with this nigga like that. This nigga ain't told me about herself. <laughs> fuck that nigga. But yeah, man, that's what that is, man. You ever been through something like that? I've, um, see, one thing about me, man, I think um, I, I had a mean mom. I think that, that helps out a lot. That my mom was, my mom's, um, my mom's pretty mean, you know. So, uh, <laughs> I, I think I, I inherited that shit from growing up with her. So I'll be able, a nigga, no, not even an act to live with me. I swear to God, I ain't never had no, and I've been living on my own a long, nigga, at least 20 years, something like that. And I ain't no nigga ever cracked a nigga. If you slept with me, you hung out with me that night and you ain't had nowhere else to go drunk. Uh -uh. But ain't no nigga been never hit me up like, Yo, can I stay at your crib? They even they know not even ask me like that. Like, what's up with the guest bedroom, big They dog? know not even ask me. Like, cause nigga, fuck, no, I, cause they know I would tell them. That's the thing. When you know a nigga would tell you no, you you more hesitant to answer. I meant to ask. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. I think niggas know I would tell you no. I don't have a I don't have a um, it's no um fucking heart. It's it's, it's no heart when it comes to the um my sanity. Yeah, the nigga coming to my crib being nasty. Oh man, it's going down. Yeah, it's going down. So, um, yeah, so you ever had that situation? And that's what happens, too, when you start making money and doing shit, people, you know. See, what I did was I got a studio, like a a, a, a studio, but I got like a house, but I put studios in and shit. So all my homies just go hang at the fucking studio. They ain't got to worry about ever coming to my real house. Yeah. <laughs> and that was the smartest thing I did. So you ever had that problem with any shit. friends? We got that right now. No, I'm just playing. Oh, for real? Nah, nah, nah. We got, a, uh, we got a house situation where, like, our podcast studios and stuff and... uh. But yeah, no, I feel you. I, I, I'm on my family shit. I got kids. I mean, once you get a certain age, I feel like yeah, after 30, I'm 20s, 40, I'm 43 20s, shit. we can play around like that. But once you get 30 and, I mean, once kids come into yeah, yeah, to, to the situation, kids, yeah. once kids come into the situation, that's when that shit over with, man. So yeah, fuck all that shit, man. Yes, yeah, man. Um, yeah, man. I got to come out in Houston and fuck with you, man. But I really want to fuck with, because I will say, man, um, growing up in Detroit, are we have a real segregated community and shit like that. Everything is just 
are fucked up. But we do have in Detroit, we get the fire fucking. We got Mexican town and shit. You get oh, yeah. the fire is fucking. I mean, it's just a whole. They got their own shit. Like even you know the Mexicans got their shit. The fucking the, the, the Arabs got their shit. That, is that Mexican? The niggas got their shit. Is that like the Southwest or something? Southwest. Because I did an in store. That's where my studio at. That's where my studio at. Yeah. I love it out there. They got the fire ice cream shops, man. Just all type of shit, man. So, like Buenos Dias, Daniel. Yeah. So even me when I went to yeah. So me getting my studio down there. I never been down there. We used to kind of be scared to go over there. Like bro, like it's just like I don't know. Everything is segregated. But so when I got my studio over there, I kind of got engulfed to, you know, living over there. And then when I moved. From um where I where, from my house and moved downtown and shit, it was pretty close to my studio. So I would you know so I would just always go over there. And then this happened like even like a situation like when COVID happened and motherfuckers couldn't get bleach and um toilet paper and shit. Like guess who had bleach and toilet paper? The, the, the Mexican. The Mexican. I see that shit stacked up. <laughs> they, we they, was they, good. They was uh, ain't nobody else coming down there unless you from over there type yeah, yeah, shit. Yeah. You get what and, I'm saying? And, they, and if they ran out, they traffic some more in. But I would say every time I would go to Houston, you know me, I was, uh, I feel like I was uh, like a normal tourist. I'd be going to like Papado's and shit like that. But I would say being, uh, you would think like you would get the most fierce Mexican food here. I haven't gotten. Oh, in food. Austin? You talking about Austin? Is, yeah. I mean, I don't fuck with the Tex-Mex. Yeah, yeah, like okay. if, I don't respect you if it's cheese on your tacos. Like, yeah, like I knock the cheese out your taco. Like I don't respect cheese on tacos, man. That's like Taco <laughs> Bell type shit. Like real, like where they, they used to just put meat. Cilantro well, and some onions. Well, the thing about, I, I don't know statistically, but from what I've observed, the thing about Houston, you're going to get a lot more like immigrant immigrants, like, uh, like yeah, the taco trucks. Yeah, I mean, that's obviously, what I want. Obviously, Austin has a fair share of that too. But, but no, it'd be fucking hipsters from Williamsburg, New York coming yeah, down yeah, here making, fucking taco, up, yeah. making, making vegan shrimp tacos. Yeah, that's soy riso looking at. Duh. Yeah, no, I feel, yeah, come to Houston, bro. There's all kind of spots. No, I'm saying every time I'm in Houston, you know, I'm always getting some, some hood nigga shit, man. I'm getting my fried chicken wings. Well, look, look, uh, I'll be playing. So I say I want to go down there. I've got to go down there and get, get with the Oh, because you know what I like, man? Um, cumbia. Oh, cumbia music. Ooh. Oh, dog. <laughs> do, do you know the history? Do you know the history of it? That's my shit. I got this YouTube channel that I follow that they show like live cumbia dances and the DJ DJ live and just everything you be playing. Like I'll be like, Ooh, you, you know what? that's African music. You know that, right? I mean, maybe it's in my blood. Original? Uh, no, I mean it's like out of. I ain't gonna lie. Like at any any party, any quinceanera, any like even a hipster party, you could play some cumbia. Could, that shit turn about up. It. That shit lit. Yeah, because there's so many different uh, branches and versions. Because it got the it's just, it's just fire. It so, sounds like some hip hop to me, like cumbia music. I be sampling cumbias all the time. Bro, bro that shit is fire. I be to me. sampling. It's one cumbia. and um, just being in Texas, I've had you know, I've had heard my shit like just going around like dog. They put so, your acapella over some. Bro, sh- no, I wish. Bro, you can, I can for sure rap to some cumbia shit. I think it's my tempo. Oh, that's what I rap man. to all day. Like, that's my BPM. Well, bro, d- you got to go down the rabbit hole and do a deep dive of, like, the history of cumbia because the the story, right? I ain't no historian, but, like... That's, like, the... Go ahead. But, but yeah, yeah. So, like, so somebody could fact check me, somebody in the comments or whatever, right? Send a super chat. So, the story is that in Colombia, you had a mix of, like, indigenous people, European, and African slaves, right? So, I don't know what part of Africa... But the slaves brought the that drum pattern, that ch- doom, doom, doom. and supposedly the dance is the way it is in terms of the foot movement is because they were shackled. Oh, shit. and it was like a um, that's deep. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's supposedly there was like a ritual dance of where like I guess um, it was something like the men and the women could do, but they were shackled, and that's what made like part of the beat. But now it's it has spread through like. You know, Colombia through to the world, all the way to Monterrey. They got people. There's a subculture of people in Monterrey, Mexico, like northern Mexico, that um, they identify with Colombian culture. So they'll wear like indigenous Col- Colombian, a whole bunch of Colombian stuff. And they like jam it, then they screw it up. Yeah, that's the thing then about it. That's what I love too. about it. They slow that shit down. They got mixtapes and like, food it, Oh man, I, but yeah, I'm really into cumbia music. I will say that. Was that's like, crazy. Um, that's like my favorite genre. Ah, man. really? Yeah, like absolutely. It's I, so I got, dark. That's what mm-hmm. they, because I, I think I love dark music and so saying. Sometimes you can hear some cumbia shit. Like it, I mean, if you heard that shit at just normal speed, that shit'll have color. It'll be life. It'll yeah, be, but when you hear that no, shit yeah. slow, that shit sound like nigga, we in hell. That shit sounds like well, the yeah. devil's music. There, and there's so many offshoots and branches. Like um, Mexico City puts their spin on it. Houston puts their spin. Then you got digital like DJ producers that be using mm-hmm. Logic and Fruity Loops and shit. 
and they be they might take a little John samples, a cumbia beat, and so on. So they be having like cumbia shit in in like uh, there's Houston? crunk there's crunk cumbia. No, I'm saying like 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 spots like where you go and you hear cumbia and motherfuckers. Is... Yeah, it's all kind of. Uh, I want to go to any any uh, wedding. I want to go to a cumbia, <laughs> man, for real, man. I lo- I really do love that shit, man. I swear to God, when I first got up on that shit, I'm like this shit fire. Like it's really got. I mean, it's it. I'm a hip hop baby, man. So I feel like it got a lot of elements of what. Who you know hip hop like that whole technique of making something out of nothing. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like they took this music and just slowed it up a little bit and you know, from yeah, a Detroit, yeah. like you know, like even like how ghetto tech and like all these mm-hmm. sub genres that's created off other genres and shit. Yeah. Like just even with I mean, obviously hip hop, that's what it's yeah, house created music, from. Yeah. My, my you know, just house music but just it all comes from sampling and shit like that, or just but just something like that just Man, I don't know, man. Cause I don't know. For some reason, uh, uh, an accordion at full speed is like, what the fuck is Pee Wee Herman around? Right? What the fuck is going on right now? But and then, and then that part, where do you slow it down? Yeah. That shit is like, oh shit, yeah. is this an organ now? Like, what the fuck? Yeah. So, what yeah. type of instrument? Yeah. Yeah. So, and then yeah. Uh, obviously the accordion uh, came from Europe. In Texas, it's a lot of like German settlers and stuff, uh, like Czechoslovakian, all kind of different people in the in Texas history that maybe they were escaping some shit. But yeah, it, it, the history gets crazy, bro. Like where the instruments, like polka, right, polka music. I mean, I feel like cumbia is not too far off from polka, in some sense. Like just I don't know. For some There's reason, some where they mix them. Yeah. Once you whip that fucking accordion out, shit, shit, shit gets creepy. Shit <laughs> get gets Polish. freaky. Shit get real. Polish. Shit get freaky, man. <laughs> that motherfucker get freaky, man. But all right. We're going to get into some white people shit. White people shit. Because, I mean, you know, you from Houston, man. <laughs> but I know you've been, if you, like you say, you spent your um, time in Austin. You done seen your share of white people shit. And um, um, walnuts, but uh, hey, Danny, I really spent some time at a friend's place in Massachusetts. When I walked in the kitchen, I noticed a bowl of whole walnuts and a nutcracker on the table. It's just white people shit. Or some common in most household. Happy Thanksgiving, Danny. Let me know what you think. No, I told you, man. We just talked about this. I feel like not too long ago, man. That's not no white people shit. That's happy holiday shit, man. I mean, yo, you got very festive. I mean, I don't know if that's normal. But at the end of the day, that's fire, man. That's protein. (laughs) (laughs) Good fats. Good fats. Yeah, mom's trying to help you out, man. You get what I'm saying? You crack a couple of them motherfuckers, you ain't hungry no more. Because sometimes you be hungry just because you dehydrated. That's what I learned. Just yeah. think about it. We don't know that, man. Your stomach ain't telling you I need water. Your stomach ain't telling you I'm hungry. Your stomach just telling you something needs to happen. So a lot of times people think they're hungry, and they're not necessarily hungry. You just dehydrated. You need something to drink. Now I'm saying you should go grab a Coke, uh, uh, you know, get some uh, alcoholic beverage or something like that. But <laughs> if you just drink some water, you wouldn't be hungry no more. Once I learned that, man, I swear to God, shit been cool, you know? <laughs> For real, man. A little shit like that, man. So you just got to know those love life hacks. But the walnuts out hanging with the nutcracker, I mean, now during Christmas, I told you in the hood, you know, that's what that's normal shit. My mom always had the nuts out. Once 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 Thanksgiving came, the nuts came out on Thanksgiving. And they stayed all the way to New Year's. She'd keep refilling the bowl. The nutcrackers out, I told you. All, all, all kind of nuts. If it's a festive, it's, you know, it's festive. It's, 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 a, it's a mixed, it's a mixed bag. But I told you, the Brazil nuts stayed last. No oh, one okay. ever ate the Brazil nuts, man. They had pecans, I, had pecans and pecans, walnuts, chestnuts. Is there such thing as chestnuts? Roast. Chestnuts roasting. Oh, it is chestnuts. <laughs> See, that always was a joke. Jimmy, you got some nuts on your yeah, chest. <laughs> yeah, that was always that <laughs> joke. <chronic. laughs> that always was that joke. So I, what I, about I forgot. Chin nuts? <laughs> I forgot that chestnuts was real nuts. But yeah, chestnuts, walnuts, pecans. <laughs> um, any nut in a shell. Okay. That's some shit my wife is probably gonna start doing because she likes to decorate and all, she's all about the holiday it's just decor 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 up and down the attic and shit i ain't gonna lie as a hood nigga um one snack that you could always get on some cheap shit that will hold you down on the block was sunflower seeds almost like playing baseball i ran across this um um you know a trader joe's i, was, I don't know where maybe trader they got extra large sunflower seeds have you guys ever seen these these motherfuckers is like this big Wow. Big ass sunflower seeds. I only could put like five in my mouth at a time. But I will say, man, um, they holding a the nigga down right now. There you go, right there. Actually, the second bag, them shits. Damn. Nigga, them shits is huge, man. No, like for, them bitches like the size of a roach. I know that's a fucked up comparison. But uh but yeah, it's like putting big ass sunflowers, but yeah, sunflower seed is ill. Why anybody, anybody ever say that in the rap? What? Like like talk about slang and dope, but they got sunflower seeds, like it's a ball game. 
Oh, as, oh, I'm putting, pi- putting as I'm no, pitching the dope, putting dope shit. in your mouth, like you um, or some about spitting out. Remember, you still had to put dope in your mouth, like to hide. I mean, well, I used to sell rocks on the block, real gangster shit. <laughs> This the fucked up part though. I, I done fucked up. I done <laughs> fucked up the dope fiends one day, man. So you used to always hear about this shit. That's why you don't need to be watching TV trying to sell drugs. Where niggas used to be putting rocks in their mouth. They holding <laughs> the rocks in their mouth on the block. So this when our spot got raided. So we oh, couldn't shit. be in the spot no more. We had to be on the block. So I was on the block. What we'd normally do is like hide our sack somewhere. And if somebody would come by drugs from us, then we'll go run off to the sack, go get the drugs and come back. But I want to be like a real street nigga. I'm going to hold the rocks in my mouth. I don't know. Maybe I had the wrong bags that I should be holding rocks in my mouth with because what happened, every rock just got filled up with spit. Oh. <laughs> so every every crackhead that I would serve, I spit the rock out. Oh, damn. And I give them the rock, but the whole pack is filled up with spit in the rock. So it like, It's starting to break down and shit. Yeah, so they would be coming back like, look at this. I can't, I can't smoke what is going soggy. on right now, man. Yeah, you selling me soggy rocks. So yeah, I say that to say that was my uh, I'm gonna bring it back to cuz getting tattoos to be tough. That was me, man, watching TV <laughs> trying to be a TV drug dealer, man. Don't put rocks in your mouth, man. That shit don't work, man. It used to be a thing too. Niggas be putting razor blades in their mouth. New York niggas, man. Don't be Buck watching. 50. Don't watch New York niggas shit, man. That shit all TV, <laughs> man. That shit don't work like that in real life. New York. <laughs> I should have just hid my rocks under the brick, under the brick in the alley, like they told me. The to. tried and true system of uh, yeah. So, get your but, lookout, boy. But you know? know me, I'm a real nigga. When they come back trying to get a refund, I'm like, bitch, what? Get up out of here. <laughs> they ain't giving you shit. So yeah, I'm sorry. I, I scammed. I scammed a couple crackheads with some spit rocks. <laughs> <laughs> I scared a couple of crackheads with some spit rocks. So hopefully, I changed their life and made them get off that shit. Get Cyrex back over here. All right. White people shit. Dabs. Hey, Danny, as a part of the melanin deficient community out here, I have to say that dabs is most definitely some white people shit. Like, don't get me wrong. I've seen plenty of brothers put some in their blunts or what have you. And far as smoking only dabs, I've seen the only white people bust out the rigs and nectar collectors. Am I tripping to some white people? Yeah. Um, I did my tour. I definitely um, hopped on a dab train. For, for, I almost burnt my house down. Ooh. And I feel like um, that's why some white people shit. Because white people are the only people that risk um, explosions for getting high. Whether it's math or even we seen King Cobra huffing cologne. <sighs> motherfuckers huffing duster. and I mean, niggas ain't thinking about that kind of shit. We just be like, man, honestly, in, in the black community, we just be like weed. Like we smoke weed. Anything outside of that. You going too far. They will judge you. They will call you a crackhead. But, you know, at this point, now niggas is like, you know, I'm getting money. I'm get, I'm doing getting money drugs. So you got to, it changed. So now niggas is getting high now. They're doing like, it, cocaine is not as frowned upon as it was 10 years ago. Is it mainstream again? Oh, it's mainstream again? I mean, it is, but the fentanyl is fucking it up. Mm. You know, so niggas is getting scared still. But Sh- niggas shit. do fan all every day if they doing perks. My favorite rapper of all time, Pimp C. Yeah, yeah he said, uh, he said, uh, moved out the city because your rapper shitty. You heard me? R- what he say? Uh, snort some white girl up off your titty. Mm-hmm. You heard me right? Pimp C is one of my favorite. I would have to say Pimp C is in my top ten. Nah, yeah, I would he, say Pimp because I've I've actually taken so much from Pimp C and rapped so much of his. Pimp C, bitch. So what the fuck is up? I mean, putting powder on the street it's like, like a big, big fucking nuts. nuts you know what I'm saying that's my nigga man but I just actually seen some shit man every saying Pimp C was like I don't want to reword it wrong but like he was super like um into like you know just learning like he had like a division one scholarship or some shit like he could have went to you know whatever don't let me get to talking line. oh um I was gonna get into this video game review man video game reviews cause I ain't actually I actually have not been playing video games like that I've actually um I downloaded um Honey, I just joined a cult. Huh? Yeah. It's a video game where you can start your own cult. And you know me, I love cults. So I've um I've started to play this, <laughs> but I will say um it's the oh, little Sims. It, it feels a little it's giving me the Sims. How, so how do you go about like persuading people to join your cult? And when it starts off, you got busted from being in another coat, and then you got a boom. You're starting from scratch, and now you got to build this other coat. What it is, if you, it's, it's more of a if you build it, they will come type of situation. So you see, like on the right, how this, you know, this architecture built 
crib situation. Mm. So you got to get your money up. You got to build these rooms and build these houses and build shit to make motherfuckers want to join your cult. Once they join your cult, you got to be, you know, taking care of them. Almost like sea monkeys. <laughs> it almost feel like it's giving me sea monkeys. Because it ain't really that much fun. You build it, watch it, take care of shit. So like make Sims sure. kind of? Yeah, it's, a, it's giving me Sims. It's giving me Sims. So yeah, I, I don't think I'm going to last long playing this. But um, I downloaded it because it seemed pretty cool. And I've been playing that. But um, no, nah, man, I've just been playing NBA 2K, real nigga from the streets. <laughs> uh, <laughs> been playing NBA 2K. Because they tired of hearing me talk about NBA 2K, man. But I want to tell y'all motherfuckers, we in season three. They got Ice Trey on the cover. You see him doing that? Ice shots out my nigga Ice Trey. Look, pull up the season three cover. I like the this one, man. Season three. No, man, you got a 23, man. You know how many season threes it's been? <laughs> this nigga don't know nothing. Was that Zolo? There you go. Look at that. Four yeah. hours ago. That bitch dropped. They got my nigga Trey like this. You think I'm not about to hop in that season three, nigga? You in that tripping. metaverse. As soon as I leave, nigga, from here. That's what I'm doing tonight. Be in that metaverse. That's what I'm doing tonight. I'm I'm running two different accounts right now. I've been playing uh, my GM on my PlayStation 5, and I've been playing my career on Steam. So if you guys play Steam, you might could see me walking around. I'm wearing all gallery park, all gallery department with some Tiffany Dunks. I got my hair blind like me. I, I've been trying to do my face scan, but that shit keep fucking up, man. I think I need more of a natural light and setting. But fuck all that, man. But yeah, that is really me if you see me on NBA 2K on Steam. The gallery department drip. I know, that's what we told him. That's the metaverse. I pay about 10,000 VC for a t-shirt. That's probably like 20 real dollars. Just to pull up in the metaverse. Like, you ain't up on this. I've literally spent tens of thousands of dollars in NBA 2K since it's been bought. <laughs> I, I'm not even joking. I spend about three to five hundred every year. I want to say I'm already 300 in a hole right now. And we only in season three. What niggas don't even understand. Most motherfuckers like you got to think kids and shit like that. 2K don't really jump up like that and get crazy till Christmas. So if you playing it before Christmas, that's like grown ups. Motherfuckers can buy shit for themselves. Think about it. If I was a kid, my mom wouldn't bought me 2K till probably Christmas. So once Christmas come, that's when shit gonna get servers gonna get a little slower. Motherfuckers gonna be on there, just gonna be crazy. So right now it's still kind of good, you know. All right, man, we about to get up out here. Let's spin the wheel one time, see what they're talking about, man. I don't feel like we did that in a minute, man. But Chingo, man, thank you for coming yes, through, sir. man. I definitely had a motherfucking H Town represent up in this yes, bitch. Sir. I definitely gotta come up to Houston and fuck with you, man. Go to some. I want to go to Cumbia, man. Get yeah, some yeah. real. Get yeah, some they got real. shit out here too. I don't bro. want no Tex Mex, man. No, no, no. They got, they got, they got parties out here too that are like all straight Cumbia, like no Tex Mex, man. No fucking text. I don't know why I hate on text mix, man, but I do. I hate on text mix. Bar mitzvahs. <clears throat> yeah, that nigga Kanye tripping right now, man. <laughs> <laughs> man, I'm just saying, man. Like, I've been watching what he got going on, man. I, I mean, Bar mitzvahs pay me to pull up. You know I don't give a fuck. I'll rock some uh, pussy eating songs for y'all all night for the kids. He about to. I don't know. With that dreidel, dreidel. Dreidel, dreidel, dreidel. I made it out of clay. Ain't that what they said? Uh, I think so. Yeah, I, mean, I told you, man. I told <laughs> I know the cumbia version. Oh, they got a cumbia version of Drake. Hey, we can make it. Oh <laughs> shit, man. <laughs> bar mitzvahs, man. Uh, oh, I bet Drake bar mitzvah was Liddy. My manager name is Paul Rosenberg. I love the Jews. <laughs> Already. <laughs> but Kanye, man. Um, that nigga out here, man. Um, I don't even, what, he, what do he's trying to test the limits of, of uh, free speech on Twitter. He posted some shit the other day. He got kids. <clears throat> yeah, uh, he man, this nigga Kanye, man, he crashing out. That's what I'm gonna say. Cuz crashing out, man. But uh, I will say, man, uh, what it taught me is that um, uh, cause I feel like a billion dollars to make me shut the fuck up. <laughs> I wouldn't be fucking with nobody. I wouldn't even be. I wouldn't know what the fuck I'd be doing. You gave me a billion dollars, man. You might not ever see me ever again in your fucking life. So for a nigga to get a billion dollars and be like, I don't even give a fuck about that shit. I guess that's respectable. <laughs> but he crashing out, man. Um, so yeah, man, we about to get up out this motherfucker, man. Thank you for coming through, man. Chingo, man. I'm looking blame, forward to you doing stand up, bro. I mean, yeah. So as a um, a fellow, a fellow hip hop motherfucker that in transition to this comedy yeah. shit, man. What would be the advice you would give? Oh me, man, man it, you know, uh, 
Hey, you're already, I'm scared. You're, I'm scared. Nah, you already got 80% of it, man. Like, you be telling stories on here. There's so many little things you could uh, take and transform to the stage. But uh, it's very similar to hip-hop because it's crowd control. Yeah, I know that. You know, there's uh, just connecting with the crowd and talking shit and, and, and bars and punchlines and... You know, attitude, energy, confidence. You got it. Yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready to get out there. Sure. So yeah, man, we'll see me, man. That's my. I, I figured it out, y'all. Remember, I told y'all I ain't figured out my New Year's resolution. That's my New Year resolution. Cuz gonna get on stage. I see y'all motherfuckers in 2023. That's the Jordan year. That's the six, man. You already know what it is, man. <laughs> All right, man, Chico, man. Thank you for coming thank through, you, man. Love, man. Hell yeah, man. Peace, motherfuckers. Your boy. Hey.